Okay, hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. It's a really cool review for you guys from the brand HGP, which actually stands for the French abbreviation for Frogmen of Paris. Yes, French abbreviation, so no, it's not going to be F. <laughs> P, right? It's it's that's actually written out there on that you little really cool like uh kind of unit patch. So if you uh speak French, feel free to comment down in the in uh the comment section on the correct way to pronounce. Otherwise, uh moving right along, um this brand essentially was once a diving equipment store in Paris from the 1970s to the 1990s and was really known to team with brands within in the French watchmaking industry, like George Monin, uh, to create custom dive watches under the HGP brand. Now, Monin famously was known for their Hoyer Monin 844 diver uh, from the late 1970s. And in terms of the modern HGP, they are now a member of the French Horology, the uh, professional union of French watchmakers and sister brand to Walbrook, which is another brand I've kind of had my eye on as well. And, uh, you know, they offer French watches proudly assembled and QC'd in France. In terms of the type of watches as a traveler's watch, some key characteristics and design, language, you look, if you're looking for something within the space, of course, you want to find uh, either a GMT or World Timer function so that you're able to track multiple time zones with relative ease. This is their Diver GMT 200 uh, automatic, and this is in the black and silver colorway. And it's essentially their signature Monin case diver, now with the added GMT function to track a second time zone. These go for $541 direct USD, and this particular unit was kindly lent in by HGP for this review. Uh, of course, this is gonna have to go back to them afterwards but big shout out to them for sending this piece in to share with you all so with all that said let's go ahead zoom the camera out get this piece in hand and take a closer look okay guys as you can see there's a bit of swag here um and you know since i have never re reviewed an hgp before i thought it might be nice to share the really cool little slip that actually comes with this piece and then there's a little backing of course so that you can uh you know, protect the back of your watch case from the back of your clasp and bracelet. So very cool, um, very rugged and definitely quite useful. And then of course you do get uh, niceties like here we go. Uh, very, very cool, nicely branded gear. And then of course, nice little commemorative stickers as well. So very cool, shout out to HGP once again, but let's dive right in. So with that said, guys, check this piece out. I mean, uh, HGP has kind of been on my radar for quite a bit, even as well as Woolbrook, one of their sister brands. Um, but I just haven't had an opportunity to collaborate with them until just recently. So again, a big shout out to HGP um, for sending this review unit in. Now, uh, in terms of the specs on here, this is a 42 millimeter diver and it wears like a 42 millimeter watch. Uh, it also, uh, one thing to mention though, in terms of the scale, at the bezel, it's only 39 and a half. So this wears like a nice uh, 42. Um, so it's not an oversized 42. I mean, I kind of think of it as, uh, if you think about something like, let's say the Seiko Turtle, even though it's larger than 42, it wears like a 42. This is what a 42 wears like, and it is 42. So there's that. And then in terms of the thickness, 13.3 millimeters thick there, and then 47 millimeters lug to lug nicely done and of course full stainless steel uh brushed with polished accents there uh very uh subtle uh you're gonna just have basically these nice bevels let me give them a quick little wipe for you guys um and they are quite gorgeous and of course that is part of that monin uh case architecture but really nice transitions and then fully brushed satinized bracelet which is actually really cool beads of rice and it has the little contours as well 
on those center links. Very, very articulated there. And as you guys can see, flows and definitely ties in to that more classic look. But I got to say, I love this colorway with the black and silver bezel. And I really enjoy the way they executed that loom pip at 12 o'clock. I think that looks fantastic. You're getting a sapphire crystal uh, that is flat with an inner AR coating. You're getting a 120 click bezel. And this is going to be unidirectional, not bi-directional very clicky Ooh, that's nice now uh, ideally this would have been a bi-directional bezel for travel but again this is built on a dive watch platform so it's going to be a diver first and foremost and then it's going to be a traveler's watch secondary and you know, even though this isn't a flyers uh, style GMT and it is a collar style, uh, it still works for, of course, keeping track of a secondary time zone. It's just not gonna be as intuitive if you were to travel with it. But again, um, there are other uses for GMT watches, such as you know an office or a caller's GMT, where you're using it to track other time zones so that you can call to those time zones uh, and communicate with them versus just being in other time zones and trying to track your home uh, location, as well as, of course, if you're tracking um, GMT time or Zulu time or UTC, all the same time, of course. Uh, but if you're tracking that and then you're using a plus or minus offset to calculate any other time zones now the crown is screwed down of course like you would expect from a diver it's not signed uh which i thought was a little odd uh, but you know what um i really don't care that's not something that i see as a value add when somebody adds a signed crown especially if it's a screw down crown but i know that's a point of reference for a lot of folks and it's something that they look for for some reason uh, a lot of people in the hobby just get really wound up about signed crowns um not me and in this case i don't mind this being not signed um it is just a little surprising just because of the, all of the details within the watch. But I will say, I guess, on the more military kind of standard issue style they were going for, um, you know, I think it makes sense within the theme. So getting into the movement, although you can't see it through this solid screw down case back, it's actually sporting, of course, your Seiko Instruments NH34 color style GMT, which is going to have a 41 hour power reserve beat at three hertz or 21,600 vibrations per hour. And it's accurate to plus or minus 16, uh, actually 15 seconds per day, which, you know, they, they tightened it up a little bit there in terms of that window. And I can appreciate that. And honestly, that is, again, the absolute tolerance. That doesn't mean that's going to be your daily average. That's going to be basically what you can consider in terms of if it is, you know, worthy to get it regulated or warranted or anything like that, if it's going to be outside of that range. Now, the dial here, very simple guys, matte black dial. You're getting these kind of raised indices there with nicely applied loom. Um, date window at three o'clock, as you can see, very classic, well-balanced and super luminova C3. So you're gonna get just a touch of a green kind of day glow loom to it. Um, and I think it looks good and, and very appropriate for this particular colorway and as well as for a really sporty tool watch. Now, the water resistance here, 20 atmospheres or 200 meters, fantastic um, and definitely confidence inspiring with that screw down crown. 20 millimeter lug width, you're getting this all satin beads of rice bracelet with solid links and end links and quick release spring bars there. So that's gonna make uh, swaps very easy. And then when you get to this bracelet, it does actually taper down to 16 millimeters. This does have a split pin construction. So nothing sexy, but also nothing complicated from that perspective either. Uh, you don't have to worry about pins and collars. You don't have to worry about stripping screws or anything like that. It's just a very simple old school split pin. Now the clasp itself is about 18 millimeters and it's a push button folding clasp with five positions of manual micro adjust and it totally works. Uh, they probably didn't even need this wide of a range of micro adjust because of how short these links are, but uh, it definitely does help ensure that you'll get a very comfortable fit. I do like the uh, decorative nature of this particular clasp. It just flows really, really nice without being like too matchy-matchy. I think they just complement each other really well. And of course, 
fully milled, which is quite nice. So with that said, let's actually get this on the wrist and see how it wears. Okay guys, as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist, this wears really beautifully. I'm digging it absolutely. The aesthetic here, everything flows quite organic, definitely has a great tool watch vibe. Of course, I get my wrist a bit too close to the camera lens. You're gonna get a fair amount of perspective distortion and it's just gonna make the watch appear much larger visually than it actually is. So what I like to do is keep my wrist nice and low and you're already seeing that go back to more of a normal size. What I like to do is just go ahead and tighten up the frame here so that you guys can get still a detailed look, but just add a bit of a truer aspect ratio as to how this may lay on your own wrist. And you guys can see this thing is pretty no nonsense. I really like the little details here. It doesn't go over the top, but it just lets you know that they put in an effort. Although it definitely is giving straight up tool watch vibes. It does elevate its execution ever so slightly just to let you know that again, this, this is really uh, has been elevated to something that you can be worn on an everyday level. They've added quite a bit of versatility, uh, of course, and functionality with that GMT complication, but also, you know, by putting it on this bracelet, by uh, giving it some of these really nice options, again, I just think it's just quite versatile, and it just looks cool. This really strikes a sweet spot for me. Um, you know, the era in which, like, docks was, were, were really dominating out in the 70s, something like this with this type of case profile, and there are quite a few other brands that are going to have these Monin style cases, um, and this is just one of them that historically just pulls it together really, really well. Of course, uh, you know, one could say that the dial layout, you know, the handset, it, it's, it's all can be considered quite derivative. But again, it's just quite legible as well and quite, quite classic. And that's how things become classic is just, you know, how many brands are using them and how long does that stay cool? And you guys can see, even with that thickness of 13.3 millimeters, I think it wraps around the wrist uh, actually quite well and uh, has a nice organic flow to it. And this bracelet is just really, really impressive. So with that said, let's actually get it off the wrist, set up for some loom shots, low light transition, and closing thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. And as you would expect, that loom is just beautifully applied, um, you know, and it's just glowing like a true tool watch, like a specifically a true dive watch. It just happens to have a little bit of extra loom for that GMT hand. Now, with that said, one thing I always like to work in is gonna be a bit of a low light transition because you're always gonna be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're gonna find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, or just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it is nice with these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting. And as you guys can see here, this looks really, really great. Um, you know, it's nothing special, it's nothing luxurious or even super premium in nature guys but again the price point is is also aligns with that right because you're getting this for about 541 us dollars so i think within that price point even though um it's not cheap it's far from expensive uh, for most collectors um and i think those are going to be people that are interested in this i don't think there's going to be a casual watch person uh, or you know who doesn't wear or collect watches it's going to see this and it's going to speak to them for some reason no i think this is definitely something that uh watch geeks and fanatics will absolutely geek out about and fanboy about or fangirl. Um, and you can see here, very, very legible. I like the matte surfaces on the dial. They definitely hold the light in a very consistent way. And you do get a slight bit of shimmer and play on that uh, double, uh, you know, bi-colored uh, bezel insert there. And, you know, I really do. Again, I enjoy the way they executed the loom pip. That 3D triangle looks great and it absolutely glows and it holds its own and it makes sure that legibility will be maintained when you're in a countdown or I should say a dive time type of situation. So I really dig that. And yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good looking piece. 
So with that said, guys, closing thoughts on the wrist, really great wear profile, chunky and overbuilt feeling without feeling oversized. I like that. I just love when Branch are able to hit that sweet spot. The watch feels full sized, but it doesn't feel oversized. It's like right there on the brink. It feels like a tool watch. It has the size so that you're still getting the legibility without the dial feeling cramped, without all the information, the 24 hour scale, you know, infringing on the ultimate legibility of what at its core is a very, very legible dive watch. So in terms of model variants, definitely check the site links for current options and availability. They do have a few different color options there as well as other variations, of course, that aren't GMTs that are just some of their really cool divers, uh, some skewing more towards a civilian style of an everyday dive watch and others skewing more towards the military commando style. So a lot of cool ones there and I hope to feature more of these in the future. Now in terms of comparable models, guys, there are a lot of vintage inspired GMTs in the independent micro brand space across a wide range of price points. Depending on the movement, uh, origin, uh, you know, with of course Japanese powered GMTs ranging between, uh, let's say 400 to a thousand dollars, depending on the choice of movement, right? So whether you're getting the Seiko powered movement or the Miyota powered, that's going to have a bit of a higher beat rate as well as the collar style GMT, which is going to be a more modern style of execution that most people consider the more premium of the two options. Although, with the collar style GMT, the nice thing is that you will maintain and retain, I should say, that uh, quick, uh, uh, quick set date window, which is great, uh, especially if your watch is in a rotation and you know they might run out of their power reserve and you got to reset it. One of the nice things is uh, when you're setting the date, uh, you don't have to cycle through, uh, you know, 24 hours or anything like that. You can just kind of flip it, which is nice, uh, like you would with a standard uh, watch. Now, in terms of that, you know, of color GMTs and, and comparables, these compare really well against the Seiko 5 SSK GMT, um, you know, but they add even more function forward capabilities, right? Like this is an actual dive watch. This is not the style of a dive watch. This is a dive watch that's been blessed with that extra capability. So I think that's awesome. Um, you know, and I'm a huge fan of the Seiko 5 SSK GMTs. They're beautiful looking. I own one personally myself, and I even play with different strap bracelet combinations. This is, you know, a nicer watch in a lot of different ways. Uh, of course, it's not going to be able to compete with Seiko uh, in terms of its heritage, but they do have a heritage, which I think is good. And uh, it's one where this particular model really dials into that and embraces that, and they're not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything. They're just putting out stuff that people really liked before, but now you're able to get it new, um, you know, a more modern interpretation, better build quality, etc., which I think is great. So bottom line, guys, HGP's Diver GMT really hits a sweet spot, representing both value um, and design. So th that's that's good. Like, it's, it's a nice balance, right? Because sometimes you get a really cool value forward piece, and it's just going to be lacking so much originality, so much personality, and just a lot of X factor ultimately, right? Because it's instead of it being the best version of itself, uh, sometimes more of those homage-based products end up being just a and a, like their their motivation for existing is to be a cheaper variation of something else that's desirable, not to necessarily be desirable. Um, intrinsically based off of its own merits. So with that said, um, I like that. And, and, you know, I like that although they're, you know, clearly vintage inspired, they do make an effort to upgrade and modernize without overdoing anything, right? It's not overly loud. It's not in your face or anything like that. And yeah, it does have a bit of a retro vibe. Um, but it's more of a neo vintage uh, retro, right? Uh, I shouldn't say it's it's definitely uh, classically vintage, but it's just from a different era, right? It's outside of mid century. It's not a big crown. Definitely has the personality there that you would expect to see in like you know a seventies 
80s uh, types of models. And I think even in this colorway, it gives it a bit of a 90s charm. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you like the video, please, please do hit like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Thank you.